Hi, I'm David Carlson Allingham, Patricia Allingham Carlson's spouse, road crew, and technical assistant. I shoot, process, and upload all Patricia's work for sale as prints and products. I also make prints from those images for sale at our art shows. In this video, I'm going to show you how I capture, process, and upload images of Patricia's art. I'm going to show you my setup to photograph watercolor paintings so I get the best results with a list of items that I use in my setup. I'm going to list my camera settings and why I use them. I'm going to demonstrate how I color correct the images using Adobe Creative Cloud image software. You can apply this process using your own camera, your own software, and your own print-on-demand services. We're not sponsoring any of these product software or services in this video. I'm showing you what has worked for us. I've included links in the description to print-on-demand sites. As a bonus, I'll demonstrate uploading the finished image to Fine Art America for sale as prints and products, so stick around to the end. If you find this information helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe and click the bell to get notified when we post a new video. And add a public comment if you have a question or comment, and I'll get back to you. Now let's get started. We've tripled our art show sales since we started producing and selling prints of originals. We print them ourselves using a wide format Epson printer on hot press bright Epson paper. The prints are sold mounted to standard size pre-cut mats in clear plastic sleeves. Self-printing and buying supplies in bulk helps us hit a lower price point for customers that can't afford an original. Capturing the best image under controlled conditions streamlines the image editing process and ensures that I get an accurate representation of Patricia's work. We have matted prints available when we sell at art shows. The last thing we want is a customer to find a difference when viewing the print and the original side by side. I've mounted a magnetic whiteboard to the wall that is level and plumb. I added horizontal and vertical center lines with marks every inch. This helps me center the painting so that I can set my camera perpendicular to the surface. I use a combination of rare earth and regular magnets to hold the painting flat against the whiteboard. My camera is centered. We have a sunroom on the northeast corner of our house. Three walls and the ceilings are glass, so after noon, all the natural light is indirect. I have two 6,000 Kelvin lamps standing at 45 degrees. The whiteboard is reflective, so you may notice what looks like hot spots, but they are actually reflections of the lamps. Next, I have a plastic laminate gray card. I use this to calibrate the color settings on my camera, as well as adjust the color balance during editing. The painting is mounted to the whiteboard for shooting. I'll capture the gray card in the frame of the picture because I want to use it later for color balancing the image. I will tilt my camera to level the shot instead of leveling the painting to save time. I'm always looking to save time as long as I'm not sacrificing the quality of the output. Having the lighting set up properly and using a gray card saves loads of time processing the image later. Here's a summary list of my shooting setup. I have a neutral colored room. A satin white or neutral gray is best. I have a magnetic whiteboard that's mounted to the wall. Rare earth magnets to hold the paintings flat. A gray card for color balance. 6000K LED lamps at 45 degrees, one on each side. Camera on a tripod that's perpendicular to the whiteboard and a remote shutter switch. Capturing the best image from the start reduces a lot of the time that you would have to spend in the image editing process. Now, about shooting the image. I shoot everything in RAW because it captures all image data recorded by the sensor. Shooting in a JPEG format compresses the image data, making some information unrecoverable if there are image problems. Make sure your image editing software handles RAW format. I shoot everything in landscape orientation, even if the painting is portrait, so I don't have to turn my camera to capture the largest image. I use automatic depth of field mode because it is the most efficient way to pick an aperture where everything is in focus. I shoot with my lens set at 55mm because it most closely resembles what the human eye sees. 
While at 55 millimeters, I move my camera toward or away from the subject painting until I have it fully framed in the shot. I also capture as much as the gray card as possible. I will tweak the position of my camera until I get all or most of the AF points or automatic focus points to light up. That may be impossible if an AF point is centered on a white spot. And then last, I shoot at least three shots so I can pick the best one when I go to image processing. To start processing the images, I copy my camera images to a folder on my computer. The software I use is Digital Photo Professional. I use this to check focus points. I have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, a photographer's subscription, which is reasonably priced that gives me Lightroom to do color balance and lens correction, and Photoshop where I can set my image levels, do perspective cropping, and put image tags in so that they're embedded into my image files. Digital Photo Professional has a lot of features and tools that you can use like white balance adjustment, auto lighting optimizer, picture styling, sharpening, you can adjust contrast, but I'm trying to reduce the time I spend doing image processing. So I skip a lot of those things and save them for Lightroom. I open up Digital Photo Professional just to check to make sure that all my AF points are lit. This is what the AF points would look like in the view mode. Now let's look at my process using Lightroom and Photoshop. I've checked to make sure I'm using the right image in my camera software and I have Lightroom open and I'm going to add those images into Lightroom. I'm going to browse to the folder that I put them in and here they are here this is the image that I'm going to use but I'm going to bring them all in and review them for import and select them all and I add those four photos okay so now I'm going to look at this one here and can see that I've missed a little bit of the bottom there this is the one I want to use so I'm going to make my adjustments to this image and all I'm really going to do is check the white balance and the lens correction I'll do the lens correction first and you can see that that made a little bit of a difference the Lightroom knows which camera and which lenses I use so it knows how to adjust it. Then I'm going to do color and this is why I have this gray card right here and I'm selecting this space over here beside the gray card to make sure that my color adjustments work out and they're hitting around 5,550 5, Calvin which is it's close enough for me. Okay. Now, at this point, I'm done with Lightroom, although I can do lots of other things, including effects and adjust color, but I want to keep it simple. So now I'm going to open it up in Photoshop. All right. So in Photoshop, the first thing that I want to do is I want to go up to Image, adjustments and levels and you see this histogram over here what we found is that a lot of our images when we put them up on the internet or, or do whatever with them make prints they look a little bit gray in the white and that's because the paper is textured and that texture comes through so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this eyedropper here to select a white point and I know that this point right here is white so I'm going to select that and it brightens it up and you can see from the histogram how across the spectrum of light it takes and takes all that gray out across the full spectrum and I'm I'm satisfied with that so I'm going to say okay here and now I'm going to crop this image so I select crop over here and over on this side is my crop tool 
and I'm going to select the perspective crop tool. So even though I was as perpendicular to the painting as I could possibly get, I know it's not going to be perfect and I don't even try to make it perfect I just try to make it close because I can do this I'm going to start in this upper top left corner and I'm going to drag down into the lower right corner and then I'm going to increase the magnification 50 percent is usually good enough and then I'm going to line those corners up and make sure that I'm over, not overlapping on any of the tape. So I'm going to check all the all four corners. This might be able to come down a little bit. You see the tape is not quite straight. I'm going to go over into this corner. And I'm going to move it just to see where I'm at. Go up into the top and adjust that and then do the same for the other side and I'm going to bring that down just a little bit so I don't have any tape overlapping and you would find that you would be covering up those spaces where the tape is anyway once you mat your watercolor so I'm not losing anything here. I'm just going to check one more time to make sure that I don't have any of that green tape showing anywhere. You see right here the tape is a little bit curved. And then I'm going to select the check, box, check mark here and then that will put that painting into perspective. And I can see that when I go into the view and have it fit onto the screen. So, so good so far and we haven't taken a whole lot of time to have to do any color correction because we did everything right when we got the shot. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the image size. Now a lot of people a lot of places will say don't do anything with your image size but I've found that it uh, Photoshop does a really good job with it and I'm going to make it 5200 pixels now let's say let's talk about pixels okay you can see right here that it says the resolution is 240 pixels per inch that just tells you the print size it'll take this 5200 divided by 240 and that's how many inches you would get for your print at that resolution the resolution doesn't really matter it's the number of pixels in the width and the height that really matter as far as what kind of print you can get out of this generally you'll get a very excellent print at 150 dpi or pixels per inch alright so I'm going to select that and I do that because this makes it so that I can use this image over various products that are various sizes going from small prints to shower curtains and even uh, some larger items so Photoshop is going through the process right now of enlarging this print You can hear my computer fan spin up. And now it is the size that I want it. I'm going to make it fit on the screen again. Doesn't seem to make any difference, but now I have a, a bigger image that I can put on more products. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to file information and what I'm going to do is I'm going to embed tags into this image so that when I upload it 
Uh, I don't have to do that. It's already done. And I'll show you that later. We keep a spreadsheet of all the paintings that Patricia has done and has all the tags and keywords and descriptions in a picture so that we can see what our inventory is. Okay, so now I have all the tags that are embedded into the image. And now I'm ready to save. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit save. And that's going to put a copy back in Lightroom if I ever want to do anything to it again. Say I want to enhance it or I want to do whatever. Put some effects in for some other use. Then I'm going to save it to where I keep uh, all of our final edits. And that's going to be under data, Patricia Carlson, and that'll be in the 2020 FAA. I'll rename the file name. I'm going to replace an existing one that I used as a test. And I'm going to save it. And this is in TIFF. Okay, TIFF is a lossless file format, which means it doesn't compress it in a way where you lose information each time you save it. Already exists, and I'm going to use LZW as my image compression. This is completely lossless. It doesn't matter how many times I open this up and save it again as a TIFF, all the bits will be there in this image. Takes a little while for it to save. And now I'm going to save a JPEG copy. So I'm going to save as, and this time I'm going to change the file format to JPEG. And once again I'm going to replace an existing file and I'm going to use the maximum quality, which is going to be the least compression. Okay, so that's that. And if I then look at, if I look at that in my files, I can see the JPEG file is about 12.4 megabytes in size and it's 5200 by 5232 whereas the TIFF is much larger it's 206 megabytes when we use things for um, internet print on demand some of them want TIFF like uh, or PNG like Zazzle but Fine Art America does a really good job with the JPEGs. So now we're going to take that JPEG and we're going to upload it onto FAA. I hit the upload image and I'm going to browse to where I store my, my uh, finished files. And I keep a, a folder for each year and I'm going to select the JPEG image not the TIFF and then upload it usually happens very fast okay so now you can see my title my artist name my keywords and description have already been uploaded because that's within the image when I saved it. I'm going to choose which gallery I want it in. I'm going to skip right now uh, original artwork information. 
we do sell originals but I'm gonna just go down the line make sure all my pricing is right for the different products we usually use a standard pricing the thing we like about FAA is they put in a base price and then you do the markup rather than them setting the retail price and you getting a percentage so if you have a really fabulous painting and you want to charge more for it go for it whereas uh, Zazzle or ImageKind they basically tell you what you're going to get from every sale and we even have face masks they have some royalty free agreements and some rights managed agreements that we've used to uh, grant royalties for book covers or we even had a television show that uh, bought some prints and they wanted the rights to it so that they could put it on their uh, in their uh, in their TV episodes I'll put a link below that will take you to our FAA site so that you can look at some of the different products that they have available. So for each image that you put up you can select from multiple print types or products. And if you're trying to match colors it can use that too if you know if you're searching amongst other artists or, or photographers. And they also have some options where you can make some uh, sales sheets that you can print out. So if you do an outdoor art shows, you can carry along a book that will tell you what your prices are for different products for your customers. You can even hand them out. The other thing that we like about FAA that's very similar to the other sites is that our customers can customize their the products that they're buying depends on the product that they're using you can pick which model you can pick whether your image is horizontal you can resize the image set the background color these things are very typical of the other uh, print-on-demand companies like Zazzle and ImageKind and, and the rest of them so you're not losing anything by using uh, Fine Art America it's just you're working with fixed products but they create them when you upload the image as long as you have the prices for sale you don't have to go and create multiple products and and it's it's just to us it seems a lot less complicated I hope you gain some insights on how you can capture and process your artwork images to make them available as prints and other products. We thought this tutorial would be particularly useful to artists looking to sell their work online given the COVID-19 pandemic and all the art show cancellations. This is the process that I've developed over a decade using tools I've invested in purchasing and learning. Be sure to check out the links in the description. If you enjoyed this video, Give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I welcome your comments and questions and will respond in a timely manner.